of data, and we're going to talk about how those different types of data affect the type of analysis that you can do uh, in a statistical sense. Uh, which types of data you have determine the type of questions you can ask and the type of analyses that are available to you to uh, get answers to those questions. So let's start with continuous data. Continuous data are just like, uh, just like it sounds. These are data that exist along a continuum where um, something like a measurement of size of an organism uh, is, a, is a continuous uh, data set. Sometimes numbers of organisms can be treated like they're in a continuum when they're relative to size. So if you have you know, density of organisms per area um, when they're relativized to a sample size or a size of an area looked at. So um, continuous data are very common. The next data type that we're, we can talk about are nominal data. Uh, so nominal data, uh, as the name says, these are like names. This is, could be, uh, you know, George, Fred, Judy, um, you know, or they could be names of different species. Or uh, a nominal data set doesn't, there's not an obvious distance from one uh, t type to another. Um, they're just names. So the names themselves contain no quantitative information. Uh, but you might have counts for those different uh, categories. And then we have ordinal data. Ordinal data are typically um, thought of as data that are like just raw count data, or they might be ranked data, where there is a name or um, a number assigned to each category, and there's an order to those categories, but that order is not necessarily the same as a continuous measurement. So, for example, low, medium, and high would be ordinal scores, but there might be a greater difference between low and medium than there is between medium and high, and that's okay. Um, so you might do that by, um, you know, describing the weather, and you might say that it is cold, um, it's moderate, or it's hot. Well, there's no value associated with those, but they're ordinally arranged. So those types of data are important. So let's talk about what happens when we combine these types of data because it'll help us figure out what types of analyses are possible. So I'm going to draw a little tiny graph here and hopefully uh, it's going to be clear on your screen. So first I'm going to go through and erase the board here and then draw another graph for our data types. Okay, I'm going to draw a four-celled graph here. And the symbols that I just used for the previous graph, and then I'll use again here, are consistent with how jump statistics um, symbolizes these different data types, which is helpful when you're running those analyses, and especially in the jump software package, because it gives you little hints about the type of data you're using, and that lets you know what you can do with the data. So when you're troubleshooting, um, your problems and you don't think that the statistics package is giving you the analysis options it should, uh, usually it's because you have your data coded as the wrong type of variable. If it's continuous data but you accidentally wrote some words in the data column, then the statistics package will only recognize it as nominal. Um, so, for example. Um, okay, let's go through and let's imagine that we have a situation where, I'm going to keep using these symbols, we have continuous data, and then down here is going to be continuous data. And then here I'm going to have either ordinal data or nominal data. I'll use those symbols, and I'm going to do the same thing here. where. I have nominal data or let's see, we'll make one a little taller than the other, that way it's or ordinal data. Okay. So what I've just drawn here is representing what's on the x-axis. This would be our x-axis, and then what's on our y-axis. So the y could be either of these and the x could be either of these types. So let's talk about the types of analyses that are available. The first type that we're going to focus on is regression or correlation. And correlation is what happens when you have a continuous uh, variable by another continuous variable. 
and you're familiar with this, I'm sure you've used this before in the past, this is what happens when we have a nice scatter plot of our data. And we're going to deal with the question of correlation or regression. The difference is that correlation means that the two continuous variables are equally correlated and you could flip the axes and get the exact same result. Regression is a situation where we're looking for a relationship where X describes Y. Um, and so that's a predictive relationship. And that's, you're used to seeing that in the form of an equation, something like Y equals MX plus B. Okay, or other forms of that uh, might be something like, you know, beta naught times X plus beta one, something like that. Okay, but it's a predictive relationship and often uh, regression. Or correlation. Okay. Um, then we have a situation where, let's move next to a situation like we have here. And the way that you might be used to describing variables, especially when you have... Um, nominal data, um, you're used to seeing graphs where you have different uh, bars representing the mean, plus or minus some error as the graphical representation. If we only have two groups, then this is commonly tested with something called a, uh, like a t-test, which we'll get at later, um, or occasionally um, if you have more than one group, um, then you might be used to hearing someone refer to this as an ANOVA. So that would be if we had, for example, three groups or more than two groups, uh, then we would call this an ANOVA analysis. Okay, so this is a situation where we have um, nominal data predicting continuous data. Okay, um, now let's talk about two other situations. The first is one like you saw, you've seen before with a chi-square analysis. This is when we have nominal or ordinal data versus nominal uh, um, ordinal data. And so there's no clear way to draw um, exactly what this analysis looks like, but um, uh, I'll give you an example here um, where I'll just draw a little plot of what a lot of your statistics packages will give you. In uh, jump, um, often the graph that they give you for this type of analysis here is called a mosaic plot. Um, so that's just what it's called by um, some packages. Um, which may be informative to some of you. I find them a little hard to interpret. Um, but this is often associated with a chi-square test chi-square or chi-square, whichever way you want to call it. So this is similar uh, to what you do in a chi-square uh, test. And finally, what about a situation where we have a continuous predictor? Um, something like organism size, size of area, um, something like that. And then we have a nominal or an ordinal uh, response variable. The most typical of these comes in studies where you're looking at uh, presence absence, where you have, you know, for example, ones and zeros. There's an or ordinal direction to that. One means it's present, zero means it's absent. But we only have two levels, yes or no, uh, present or absent, and then we have a continuum. And um, often that will result in data that's going to look something like this. And the fit that's often given to that is often called a logistic regression. Um, and often you'll save that for a little bit more advanced statistical approaches. So this gives you a general map to the types of uh, data analyses that you can do based on the type of data you have. Typically in statistics, I like to run through uh, regression first. I think if you understand uh, regression, that's the most basic and most widely applied type of analysis in uh, ecological uh, studies, and especially in observational studies where you can measure two continua. Um, the next uh, that I like to jump into are t-tests or ANOVAs and talk about how they relate to what happens in regression. Um, and in between there, we might talk about chi-square. 
um, and then we save logistic for last. Um, but as you hop into analyzing your own data set, hopefully this provides you with a little bit of a roadmap of where you should be going and what you should be thinking about. Okay, so here we go. We're looking at um, uh, some jump, some data in jump. I've opened up jump the program and I've created an example data set that has the same type of data that we were just looking at on the board. In this case, I have nominal data, continuous data and ordinal data. Uh, the display is going to look a little different on a Windows machine, um, but it's essentially the same. Uh, Jump tries to make itself standard in, in all uh, formats. When I go to analyze uh, here in the menu, um, I get an option to do distribution, which we've done before, and then fit y by x. Fit y by x gives me the opportunity to look at the relationship between any two variables. And it's going to give me some hints about what my options are in terms of analysis. You'll see that if uh, my variables, which are already coded by either red bars, purple triangles, or green uh, stair steps, um, are represented by this four-way table down here, which is a map to what types of analyses I can do. If I have data, for example, that is a continuous uh, purple triangle by purple triangle type data set, my only option is going to be a scatter plot or a bivariate fit. If, on the other hand, I have a continuous data set for my y variable, but let's say I have a nominal data set for my x variable, then the option that I get is going to be a one-way t-test or an ANOVA. And let's take a look at what that looks like uh, when we hit OK and run this analysis. Here's the uh, window that you get um, when you try to run this analysis uh, in the first place. You can see that I have individual dots aligned with individual categories or names of variables, in this case, K, L, O, and P. Um, and I can do an analysis on those using this red dropdown. And we'll get to what that analysis looks like um, in future labs. Um, I'll run one now just to take a look at it so you can see. Um, how Jump is going to do this analysis. Um, so this is a fake data set, but you can see that what it's doing is comparing these four categories. Okay, um, This is uh, very different if we do other types of analysis. If, for example, we have another continuous data set, and let's create one. This is going to be fake continuous data two. And making up some random numbers here just for demonstration purposes. Um, now I can go to analyze fit y by x, and you'll see my fake continuous data automatically was recognized because they were all numbers, it automatically was recognized as a continuous uh, variable. If I have a continuous variable by a continuous variable, when I say OK and try to run that analysis, it gives me a scatter plot similar to what you've seen before. And I can fit a line to that scatter plot. In this case, there's no relationship, as I hope there wouldn't be, uh, since this is completely random uh, data. Uh, but it'll try to fit a line of best fit to those data. Um, so there are, there are other situations, of course, where this would be a, a better situation. Uh, in our next video, we'll go through uh, interpreting the line of best fit and doing actual.